Some of the plants, are, some of the nuclear plants are 40 years, 60 years. They could be renovated and done another permit for going 100 years or more. We have to think about those things. We paid an awful lot of money for them and we'll pay a lot of no money to, to take them down and decommission. Look at the black dots. The black dots are oil, liquids. The oil for power is not all in this map. The rest of it I'll show there. But what did we do between 2000 and 2011 relative to this picture? You may not be able to see the natural gas very well. That's the very pale blue. We have the nuclear, which is green. We have the coal, which is the gray. So we increase natural gas. That's good because natural gas has less carbon intensity than coal. Now, nuclear is neutral. It's, it's carbon neutral. Coal, we decreased significantly. Okay? That, that's a good effort. The oil, the liquids, we also decreased significantly. So we increase the natural gas because we are adopting the fracking, the hydraulic fracturing. We are increasing. This is good for the economy. We just need to be sure we're doing it right and think about where we do. What many people don't realize is uh, the fracking is very land intensive. So you do it and you keep moving. So we have to look at everything, all the consequences of what we do and where we do it. We're using water all the time. Look at this. I just want you to see the difference between the triangles. Triangles are where people take that water, put in the power plant, plant and recycle it. The others, our friends in the Midwest here, they are all once true. Can you imagine that? You're just flowing water all the time, flesh, water. Those are things that can be done and minimize this use of water, and I'll come back to that more in a little bit. We have grown renewables quite a bit. Okay, this is a remarkable achievement over this 2000 to 2011. We now have 8% of renewable power wind growing fastest, it's hitting the cost. We also have a lot of different types, some of the sources. So I highlighted the wind, and you can see the wind is the, this type of green, obviously, or the places that have a lot of it. Then we have hydro. Now remember, hydro has all the problems we talked about. We may not have all the power capability with climate change and those hydroelectric power plants. So we need to think about, you have to think about all this whole region, and I'm glad the Western governors are doing that, and a lot of people are doing the region of how is this going to look like. Petroleum refining, here's the rest of the petroleum. See where the refineries are? So over there, obviously, we established more infrastructure and we are using biofuels. 5% of the transport energy is biofuels. This is quite a remarkable achievement. The, and how fast it was done, because of the how fast it was done, it caused a few other problems. There's hardly anything we do on Earth if we don't think it through that may not have an unintended consequence. And so the planning, thinking, talking, getting people from all venues with all sorts of different backgrounds is part of how we're dealing in the intergovernmental panel to try to get people to talk with each other, see if we can find things that would be better. Now, look at the size of the distribution of just the alternative fuels. This is a small fraction we do have the 10% of uh, ethanol is penetrating almost 100%, 95%. Others are not quite so much. We have other options. Electric, uh, we have the, the liquefied natural gas. We have options that we have to look at how we can use. But I would say, and I agree completely again, with what the president put together in this action plan. So here's 
what has been done. The strong fuel economy standards really did impact. Just take this point. In 2007, when the Energy Independence and Security Act was enacted, 15 billion gallons was, 20, uh, was what they expected 10% of gasoline consumption to be. Since we decrease consumption so much, we don't need 15, 13 will do for 10% of what we're consuming. Not just that, we have the natural gas liquids, we have other things that can be very helpful. Double renewable energy, depends on where you're talking about what you saw, but yes, in some places we more than double. Decreased carbon pollution, that's very true. If you take 2007 to now, up to 2007, we kept on increasing the amount of greenhouse gas. We went to 8%, 18%. 2007 down, we went back down 8%. So we are only 8% far from what would have happened if we had signed Kyoto. Where is that CO2? It's most, the, the greenhouse, yes, it's CO2 the biggest. Methane, yes. Agriculture, uh, cattle, all of that, a lot of NO2 is also related, the nitrous oxide also related to agriculture and industry. So, we are, do, are doing things. The plan, oops, the plan does in fact go through a lot of things that you heard, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to miss talking about a few things to talk about. This, this is important. Why resource use efficiency is important? If you take that 16%, somebody took the trouble to do a basket of the economy and took 4,500 pounds and calculated, okay, if I take that, all products that we use in the world, these products account for 20% of the global warming potential. That's agriculture, all the crops, plus all the animals, fish, and so forth, all the products we make from them. However, the unintended consequences, they cause 15% of the other pollution problems that were suffering. So, what are those pollution problems? I'll give you the Big Ten. The Big Ten, we know, the center one is climate change. Uh, the one that's also getting to a difficult level is really because all this extra fertilizer, fertilizer runoff goes to the waters. What happens? Algal blooms. You start changing all that ecosystem. <coughs> so this is something we have to fix. So we have to adapt and mitigate while doing those and not letting the ones that aren't in the red, what are they? Phosphorus died, fresh water, water is very important. The land use, the land system change. The aerosols and, and then others that aren't so well uh, calculated yet on the chemical pollution and its impact. The big ten are important. I'm going to give you a Colorado example here compared to Midwest. Energy, water, and land are intimately related. So if you take our <laughs> southwest region, the water is all for agriculture. If you take the Midwest, where we produce the bulk of the corn, agriculture doesn't quite use much at all. But what I showed you before, the power plants that has the biggest amount of coal power plants, that does. So we have to help the system to balance and get to a good point, and we can do that. It takes time. Okay, it takes time to change things. We evolve. We get things that move fast. The internet's moving fast. Information technologies can move fast, but things that are infrastructure that are have to be built take longer. Uh, we need a portfolio of solutions. Energy efficiency is obvious. We also need renewable energy. We also need to develop ways that we can take the carbon dioxide that's out there and 
take, take it out and store. So if I take what the Global Energy Assessment is doing, which is analyzing the futures and how you could go, all those futures, so this one has a mixture of efficiency and uh, supply of energy. See that when the, the oil products go down this way, they have a large consumption of bioenergy as bioliquids. They have a consumption of fossil that continues. It's enabled by bioenergy. Bioenergy can actually help of settle that carbon if you use some, some of the technologies. Here's electricity. All of them have a piece of that green, have a piece of that continued fossil use, which means we have to also work on those things. So, capture, you can capture and put it. Is it going to stay down there? We can't say, no, we can't do it. We have to have multiple options to be a robust way to get to the point of reducing as much as we need. This is how much it would take, according to EPRI, for them to get to the right cost. By 2035, look at when we need it. We need those things. Whenever they start here, it's all with carbon capture and storage. <coughs> the renewables are the good story. The renewables are this story. Co took this long, 30 years, just so that they start getting the cost right. Natural gas a little less. The good story, look at wind power. The cost, which is here, came down much faster. The photovoltaic cells came down much faster. Those are good news. It doesn't matter that the Chinese put more products out. We're using those to learn how to do the next step. What have we conquered? We conquered a system for businesses that can allow us to install them and get our people to start getting used to installing solar panels and dealing with that. So we have, in fact, a, a, a great opportunity to design solutions that are intelligent. Some of them can be standalone, but some of them, and that's the important point, is the existing infrastructure is not going to disappear. We can't back one with the other. It's all interconnected. Okay? So we can do this, and this is a very, very good news story. I just want to say that uh, President Obama hit head on. It's a global problem. We have to work both with the countries that are major economies, with the developing countries that are major emerging economies, because they can also help lead. We need a lot of leadership. We need his leadership. You all, and that's why I'm so glad to be here, is that you are, you are addressing local problems. The local cooperation can get us. If we understand how this is, I know it's complicated, I'm sorry, I'm not sure I made it simple enough, but it's a lot to absorb and try to handle, and we can try to doing this, understanding a portfolio of options, a portfolio of the consequences, and constantly assessing how they change, and what's important locally. Can you imagine 20, 30 years from now, what we would like for this region to be and backtrack to see how we reach it? Different parts of the United States will have different solutions. We are very different. Okay? So, no silver bullet. We have to understand trade-offs and make good choices. So, action is in your hands to help our government decide. We have to have ourselves be understand a, a lot. It doesn't have you don't have to understand any detail, just how interlinked all this is. And if you touch here, how it is going to propagate. It's not as complex as weather. It's not as complex as autumn. But it's all economic links. And we can deal with that. So it's a very 
positive, and for me, it's congratulations to the group, because in your hands, there's a, a big role for helping us manage this change in climate. Thank you very much. Okay, thanks, Helena. Okay, um, let's let's thank the speakers again, please. Okay, we're going to take a break and then go into the question and answer session. I'd like to ask the volunteers who were manning the sign-in tables to go ahead and proceed back to the sign-in table so that you can uh, take the uh, uh, questions, written questions from the, the audience. Um, so we're going to break here in just a minute. Uh, you guys will be able to fill out a 5 by 7 card with questions and leave it at the sign-in table if you have any questions. Oh, I think Helena's got something else. The last slide is something that I'd like to fill out after you guys ask, actually ask questions. Then we'll make available the presentation so you can look back and you can see some answers to the questions and some directions for where we're going. Okay. All right, so uh, bathrooms are out the door to the left. Fill out your uh, qu questions on the car, drop them off with the volunteers at the table. And uh, let's let's try to keep the break as short as possible, like five to seven minutes if we can. Thanks.